This is a Mercury Arc rectifier, known as an Excitron. These things are extremely rare these days and very expensive, uh, especially in this good of condition. Um, this is just some Mercury condensed build up on the uh, side because it's been running for a while. Um, there's a big pool of Mercury in there. There's almost about like a kilo of Mercury in there. I think it's like 660 grams or 680 grams of Mercury in there. So it's quite a fair old bit. This thing just dips into the, um, there's a magnet on the back. I put a magnet, normally there'd be a solenoid on there. It's half wave, so it's just, instead of the AC sine wave going up and down like that, it's just that and then that and then that. And it just cuts off. But well, the way it works, anyway, is uh, power can only flow from one, in one direction because of the mercury vapour acting like a block. It will only let current flow in one direction. So essentially, this is just a diode. That's all that is, really. Um, so positive goes to the top. There's its grid as well. It's got a grid as well. It's uh, on at the moment because there's a small lamp across there. That gives it a positive bias on the grid, so it's grid controlled, but if I put that at the bottom, then it won't allow, and it will block it. So it's controllable like that, which is quite interesting. Um, capable of uh, rectifying quite a few thousand volts. These things are quite high power, but I'm gonna start it. It's a bit of a pain to start this one, but you just remove the magnet. That's a short circuit. Uh, there we go, first try. And now that just sits there, <coughs> ticking away. And then for the load, I've just got it straight off the Variac because um, it will run, it will conduct all the way down to about 30 volts, roughly. Uh, and then there's just a fan there to keep it cool. And it's got a heat sink there. You can see through the heat sink, there's, it goes all the way through. You can see my hand behind there moving. Um, and then there's a plate just there, copper plate. Um, for the load, I've just got this 600 watt heating element. Not ideal, but it works. So, why change it if it works? So we'll give it a bit of fan. Don't need a lot, just a few volts. Just to get that to spin. About five volts on that. This lamp won't come on, by the way. It's just giving it a positive bias. It'd be best to use a quite high value resistor uh, on there if you're going to use it for its higher voltage rating. I'll put a thing up on the screen now of the uh, data sheet, but let's give it some power. So we'll start off, uh, ignore all the messy wires, that's just to keep it out of the way of the floor and all the rest of it in the element there. So we'll start winding it up. You'll see it'll come on. There we go, it's conducting. It's quite nice. And then of course we can go silly with it. That's like 150 volts. It's continuously excited because the uh, exciter stays on all the time, which means you can switch off the main current as and when. You don't need to keep restriking it. But let's just go silly with it, shall we? Sounds nice, I better give it more fan. Very blue. Wind it down. Heating element doesn't glow at all. It is quite warm though, as you'd expect. To power the uh, exciter there, we've got, so we've got mains comes in here, goes through this ballast, which limits the current to this. And then out of that, we get about 30 volts. Uh, which under load is probably about 24-ish, which is what it's meant for. And that goes into a rectifier, comes out, and the positive side goes into this uh, transformer. I'm just using it as a choke to give a nice kickback to strike an arc in that. Um, so it's just a random microwave oven transformer. And then the negative from that just goes straight to the bottom there. And that's what runs it, it's dead simple really. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's dead simple. Uh, 
let's give it more of course, as usual. That's maxed, the variax maxed. Let's see. Let's try it with the lights off. Might be quite a lot nicer with the lights off. There's the top. Not that you can really see that. That's the top of it. I've got a bunch of holes there for cooling at high powers. Let's give it some power then. Quite interesting to see what's actually uh, going through that, just how much is going through that. Let's get the meter and measure the current, shall we? Right, uh, let's give it, let's just go silly with it and whack it right up. And then we'll turn it onto amps. Oh dear, the meter's not working. Why is the meter not working? Have I left it on? No, now it's working. Okay. Mm. About an amp going through that, roughly. So, not all that much, really. But that's capable of taking like 60 amps, roughly, uh, for a short period, and like 10 amps continuous. Let's take it down to about there, that's half. About half an amp, roughly. That's on the AC side, because this meter only works with AC. You can smell the heat of it, it's getting a bit warm now, but that's to be expected. Let's restrike it, shall we? So, that's a short circuit. And then as we lift it, oh, see, this is why it's normally, there we go. It's normally a bit of a pain to strike it, but it's been on for quite a while. I've left it on for well over 24 hours now in total, so bed it in a bit because it was basically brand new I think so let's give it some more power you'll have to excuse the horrible flicker that's nothing I can do about that that's just the mains refresh and like flicker and the camera doing weird things It's quite lovely. But it'll sit there all day like that. It really is flickery, isn't it? Sorry about that, guys. Let's turn the light on. See if it makes any difference. Still flickering it out. As the mercury vaporises, it will condense on the side there, form droplets and drip back down. I'll overlay a uh, wash, I'll put it at the end of the video, I'll put a time lapse I did today at the end of the video of it dripping back down. It's quite a satisfying thing to see, to be honest. And there it is. A working mercury arc rectifier known as an Excitron. Or AR63, unfortunately, the stamps rubbed off quite a bit there. Nothing much left on there, eh? There we are. Better demonstrate the uh, grid actually, thinking about it. So, we've got the grid. If we take that and we'll put it down there on the bottom. That gives it a negative bias and no current will flow. See, that's maxed. Nothing happens. And then if we put it back up there, and then give it some, and you see it conducts. Right. 
might be able to see up into the grid. There's the grid. Let's just turn that fan down because I'm sure that's very loud. That's the grid. Let's turn the light off. Well, that's the grid. You can still just see the blooming ceiling fan. Let's give it some power. That didn't make much difference either, did it? Oh, that's annoying. There's the grid anyway. Looks like the inside of a bloody nuclear reactor, that. Now that's probably a very rare shot. Sounds nice. And off. So there it is, a working Excitron. I'll just sit there.